So in this episode of How to Draw, we're going to be working on our first portrait. This is a great one to help anyone who's trying to learn how to draw portraits or just to improve their drawing in general. Although this drawing is a bit more on the advanced side, if you're new to drawing, grab your supplies and follow along. You may be surprised what you're able to do. For this portrait, we're going to start with arch watercolor paper. We're using hot pressed, which is smooth, and we're also going to need our drawing supplies. I'm going to be using Stadler pencils today. Now this paper, the arches, comes in a watercolor block. What that means is you need to remove each piece of paper with a palette knife. So what you do is you just run the palette knife along the seam here, and each piece comes out. These pencils are the Mars Lumograph. Um, I'm going to be using 6H, 4H, 2H, HB, 2B, and 4B. And this is the reference photo that I purchased from Adobe Stock. So you can pause the video here, take a screenshot, and use this as your reference to draw. To make sure I have all my proportions correct, I'm going to set up a grid on my reference photo. So using the ruler and setting it up parallel to the edges, I set up a dot every one inch and then connect them all. On my Arches Hot Press watercolor paper, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I have a one-to-one -one grid. If you're new to drawing and never used a grid before, I'll have a link in the description with a video showing you how to set up a grid and all the steps you need to get it done correctly. To keep this video a little bit shorter, I decided to remove the part where I transferred all my lines and using my grids. Uh, so instead, we're going to jump right into the drawing here. Now, if you never drew a portrait before, these can get overwhelming very quickly. So a good little trick that I like to do is block out every little section of the drawing that I'm not working on. You could see here, I just kind of squared off the eye where I'm going to be laying down my first layer of graphite. That way, I don't even have to think about other areas like the forehead, nose, mouth. Um, and I could just focus on this one little section to not get overwhelmed. So in art, when you're working on your own pieces, I think it's important to make a distinction between two important parts. One is technique, and the other is concept. For me, this drawing is 100% about technique. There's zero concept in it whatsoever. The reason being is because it's based off a photograph that I had nothing to do with. It was a photo that I found on Adobe Stock and purchased just to use as a reference for a drawing. So on this one, we're not focusing on making a great piece of art. What we're doing is we're focusing on making a great drawing. Uh, there's a big distinction between the two, and in future videos I'll go into more about my, my philosophy on that. So with any portrait, I usually like to start with working on the eyes. The reason is, they're usually some of the darkest areas, with sections like the pupils and around the eyelashes, uh, because they're recessed into the face, and they generally have uh, a bit more shadow on them than other sections. When you look at the reference photo, you'll notice it's extremely dark around the eyes here. So I know I'm going to have to use one of my darkest, softest pencils, like a 4B or maybe a 6B. So to set that up, I'm going to come in with an HB pencil first. The reason is an HB is not as dark as a 4B or a 6B. It's a little bit harder than the others, and it's just a little bit lighter. So if I go in and make a mistake here, I know that I can erase it out. Once I have enough of the graphite down from the HB pencil, I come in with a blending stump and try to blend it smooth so I have a base coat. Then I come in with a 2B, like this, which is a darker pencil, and fill it in evenly. As soon as I'm done with any pencil, I come right back in with a blending stump and an eraser to pull out a few highlights and to blend some areas smooth. So I noticed the 2B is dark enough for uh, this section of the eye. I'll show you a little hack later on that we can use to darken it even more. A great tool for pulling out little highlights is one of these electric erasers. This is one I picked up the other day from Blick Art Supply. What I like about it, it comes to a very sharp point at the end, and the eraser is very thin. It has very thin diameter to it, so it's nice to use to get in and pull out some details. Before I work any larger section like the cheek here, I like to come in with a lighter pencil, like a 2H here, and Fill in the area with some graphite first, just using um, vertical strokes up and down, and then come in with a blender and try to blend it smooth. This way I have some base value there, so I can erase into it to pull out highlights, or I can come on top of it with a darker pencil, like an HP, to add some shadows into it. One thing that you'll notice very quickly when you start drawing and blending is that the value is going to darken a little bit when you go on top of it with a blending stump because what happens is you're pushing the graphite into the paper so the value gets a little bit darker. And when you blend, make sure you don't rush. Just go slow and take your time. Now moving on to the nose here, I'm going to start with a 4B. 
to get in this really dark shadow right above the, the nostril here. On the lower part of the nostril, I'm going to start with an HB pencil to get some graphite in and then blend it. You could see here as I blend, you could see it starts to get darker. And as I go up to the area where it gets lighter, I use a little less pressure on my blending stump. That way you get a transition from dark to light. Also on this too, I came in with a 2B underneath just to darken it a little bit more than it was before. So this tip is for new drawers. If you've been drawing for a while, you know this already, so you could just ignore this. To keep your drawings a bit more realistic, you want to avoid outlines. Outlines flatten the image. In life, everything has a smooth transition from one section to another. Um, in a drawing, your outlines and your lines are really used to help guide you, to put your shadows where they need to be, or to remove your highlights. Now that doesn't mean you can't use uh, lines in your drawing. Plenty of artists use lines and hatching, but if you want to try to get to that more realistic quality, lines are going to hurt you. Just remember that art and drawing is all subjective, so you can draw any way you like. Um, in my style of drawing, I generally prefer everything smooth. Something I love about the electric eraser is doing something like this where I'm trying to pull out highlights for pores. If you look at the nose here on the reference photo on the left side of the screen, you notice a ton of little bright um, highlights on the nose itself. The best way to do this is to take your electric eraser, which only has one speed when you press the button, and just come in and tap it all around where you see highlights. And what you'll get is little bright spots that look like pores on the nose. If you'd like to get a little bit more advanced, you can come in with a light pencil and underneath each highlight you can add a little shadow. That way it'll give it a bit more of a realistic look to it. With this other eye, I'm going to do the same thing I did on the other one. I'm starting with an HB pencil and filling it in, then blending it, and then darkening it with a 2B pencil. Now as we move down to this next cheek, we're going to have to put in a base layer. So just like before, I'm taking a 2H pencil, which is nice and light, and I'm filling in this area, trying to put the graphite down in vertical strokes and trying to keep it as even as possible. This is going to give me a light layer of graphite that I can come in and blend. And remember what I said before, when you come in with your blender on top of this, it's going to darken a little bit. So always keep that in mind when you're putting down your graphite. Make sure you hold your pencil from the back to apply light pressure. Um, if you, you hold it in the front like you normally would for writing, the pencil is going to come on too dark onto the paper. So hold it from the back and use a little bit of pressure when you put it down. It's always best to keep your drawing lighter because you could erase it. When it's darker, it's difficult to erase and difficult to change. So keep lighter and gradually build up the dark tones. The nice thing about having that first layer of graphite on the page is that I could take my eraser and pull out some highlights. So we're trying to create a 3D effect on a piece of paper on a two-dimensional surface. So areas that are lighter where you erase are going to look closer to you, like right in the middle of the cheek. And then areas that are darker, like that fold under the eye or the eye itself, um, are going to be pushed back a little bit more. So they're going to seem like they're farther away. So that's what help, helps us create that realistic look, that illusion of depth and uh, areas that are closer to us. So the right side of this drawing is basically done here. But what I like to do and what I recommend for you as well is stop every maybe half hour or so or every 20 minutes and walk away from your drawing. Do something else. Come back to it later. Come back to it in 10 minutes if you want. But just spend a little bit of time away from it because what it does is it helps you see it with fresh eyes. When you're working on it for a long period of time, like a few hours, you kind of forget to see new things. You're, you're kind of used to, to seeing what you're looking at and you don't really notice uh, little differences that you're going to have to adjust in the actual drawing itself. So take that as a tip, um, some advice. Just step away from it and come back when you feel like you're ready to draw again. Now looking at this other side of the face, uh, we already had that first layer of graphite down. So I see some wrinkles on the left side here which I'm going to add in. So always start light like I said I'm using a 2H and an HB and putting down a little bit where each shadow is and then always coming back to my blending stump and blending them smooth when they're smooth I could come back later and add a darker uh, value to try to sharpen them up a little bit but the best part of having them smooth and light is that if I want to move them I could erase them I could use my eraser or I could use a kneaded eraser and just kind of lift it out and start again 
To save a bit of time here, instead of putting a base layer, I went right in with a 4B pencil and filled this area in dark. The reason being is because I have the area marked out already, and I know it's not going to change. There's really not much I'm going to have to erase from that. So I fill it in dark just to save a little time. You could do this, but you just have to go slow. It's, it's better to put down a base layer because you have something for the next light of graphite um, to kind of go over. So it's really up to you. I went a little darker on this one just to get this drawing done quicker. Now we want this cheek to have a, a 3D effect to it. So like I said before, we're going to have to darken the area underneath. So what I did here is with my blending some and not really adding much more graphite into it, I just kind of took some of the graphite that was down in that area before, that really dark area, and pulled it out. The nice thing about graphite is it, it blends really easy and it's very um, easy to manipulate and move around. So try that. Sometimes you don't always have to use your pencil to put in graphite first. Sometimes you could kind of steal it from another area and move it around where you need to. What I like to do to keep my eraser sharp is I get one of these sand blocks from any art store. You could buy them online. And then using my eraser, I turn it on and press it at a 45 degree angle like this. And what it does, it helps me get a very sharp point at the edge of that eraser. And when the point is sharp like this, I can come in and pull out very sharp details. And I'm using this just like I would a pencil. I'm basically drawing with it. If you don't have an electric eraser, you absolutely don't need one. It's kind of a novelty and it helps for certain things, but I could do almost the exact same thing with a normal eraser that's sharp. But since I'm trying this new eraser out, I'm using it on this side of the nose here to pull out small details, small highlights where the pores are. Now if you're new to portrait drawing and you're following along with this one, this is a good place to stop. You, you got really far on this one, you were able to get around three quarters of the face, the eyes, two eyes, a nose. The, obviously the only thing left for a normal portrait is the mouth, but on this one it's blocked by the hands. So spend your time just working on this part of the face. You could stop here and consider it a study. Just work on the eyes and the nose the best you can. And with a side profile like this, you don't have to worry about symmetry. It's not like the face is looking at you straight on. So do the best you can to, uh, to get this, this part done. And if you want to follow along with the rest of it, I welcome you to. So moving along to the next part of this portrait, the eyebrows and the lower part of the forehead here. Um, I knew this section was very dark before I went into it. This whole photograph, this portrait, has kind of this chiaroscuro look to it, which is very high contrast. In television, we'd call it like uh, HDR or something like that today. So what that means is kind of like a high dynamic range, very deep shadows and very bright highlights. This was something invented basically during Baroque period after the Renaissance. If you look at artists like Caravaggio or Rembrandt, you'll see a lot of this style, these very, very deep shadows contrasted with bright highlights. I'm in no way comparing myself to masters like that. I just want to point that out so you understand a little bit of art history and where that came from. Generally around the year 1600, that style was invented. Late Renaissance, early Baroque. So since we know that this is a dark area, I'm going to start with a darker pencil. I'm I came in here first with an HB pencil, which is much darker than I usually start with. Generally, I'll start with a 2H and then work my way up from there. But when I put down the, the HB pencil, I held the back of the pencil like I normally do, just so I apply light pressure. That way I don't press too hard and the graphite doesn't get pushed into the paper too much and keeps the value a little bit lighter. If I press harder, I'll get a darker value. So if you made it this far and you're still following along, I think the most important thing that I need to keep stressing is constantly look at your reference. I'm not really inventing anything here. What I'm trying to do is mimic my photograph. Of course I'm making changes, subtle changes where I want to stress different values, but in all honesty, mostly what I'm doing is trying to copy what I see. The reason being is I'm trying to learn from it. I know when I was in graduate school for art that there was a whole group of students, of artists who only worked from life. They said you shouldn't work from a photograph, it's too flat. I'm not going to get into the whole debate, but I think it's the year 2021. I think a photograph is a great tool to help you along. And for my own artwork, I use it all the time. I use Photoshop and a bunch of different photos to compile my images. So it's up to you. If you want to work from life, it's an excellent way to learn. There's no question about that. But 
since we have these tools at our disposal, photographs, especially ones like this with such great value, I say use them to learn from, use them to practice, because that's a big part of art. People seem to forget that we need to practice and we always need to improve our skills. Now here I'm using some graphite powder. You can get this at any art store or you can pick it up online or on Amazon. And what I'm using it for is on this left side of the portrait where it's very dark. If you need to fill in a large area and you're only using graphite, you basically have two options. One is you could take a dark pencil and fill in the whole thing, or you could do what I'm doing here is using some graphite powder to fill this in. But if you're working with graphite powder, you're going to run into a problem that when I just started drawing, it bothered me a lot and I couldn't figure out how to fix it. So I kind of just dealt with it. Graphite powder is very matte. It's flat when you put it down. When you're using a dark pencil, like a 4B or a 6B, it has a gloss look to it. So these two juxtaposed give you a very different sheen when you look at the image. And to me, it, it just looks off. It looks kind of wrong. So you can just stick with this, uh, leave it like that. And um, many artists do. It looks just fine. It's, it's one of the properties of graphite. But I figured out years ago a solution that I like to do. So as you can see here, this looks a lot better. What I did was I used an airbrush with some acrylic paint in it. The paint I use is Createx Illustration Line, which is a transparent color. And the color I use is called Transparent Black. Now while this works great, you run into a, a new problem. You'll see where the other shadows are that we put in before with a 2B pencil like around the eyes are now much lighter because you're comparing them to a much darker color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this airbrush to fill in these values a little bit darker. This is not that difficult. I'm just going in very lightly and just spraying the tiniest bit of transparent black on them to darken them up. Now, of course, you could skip this step if you don't have an airbrush or you just want to stick with only graphite. The pencil or graphite powder works just fine in the background. But for me, to get that higher contrast, I find the airbrush with this transparent black works very well, and it's not that hard to do. In the future, I'll have some videos explaining how to use an airbrush. This one that I'm using right now is an Iwata Eclipse. Now, to save some time on this drawing, I decided to put the hair in almost like an impression. I didn't go in for extreme detail to try to get every little hair and every highlight. I wanted to kind of keep it simple here just to speed it up a bit. So a cool thing about this paint, this uh, Createx illustration line, is that you can actually come in with an X-Acto blade and scratch out areas to pull out highlights like you can if there was graphite down on the page with an eraser. But to keep this simpler and to do it a little bit quicker and more accessible for everyone is I used a colored pencil, just a normal one from Blick, a white one, and pulled out my highlights of the hair using that. While doing this, it's important to not try to draw every single strand of hair that you see. You want to work in groups and in clumps and look at the hair and see how it's kind of gathered together. Each strand of hair has thousands of, of individual hairs in it, and you want to work on focusing on drawing those together. So you're basically adding highlights where you see a brighter spot, fading it into a shadow so the hair looks like it's either coming towards you or moving away from you. Now, I know I keep saying this, but with hair and like everything else in drawing, it's important to take your time. You can't rush. I spent probably about a half hour to an hour finishing up this hair. And again, I wasn't trying to go for crazy amounts of detail. I was trying to keep it simple to almost look like it was an impression of hair. To keep the dark values the same, on the other side of the face here, I used the same paint as I did before with the airbrush and sprayed this down quickly and flat to get a nice even tone across it. And while I have the airbrush in my hand, it's a great time to go around to darken any areas you need to. When using an airbrush, you just have to be very, very careful because whatever you put down, you're not going to be able to remove. So it's not like graphite where you can erase it. So if you're new to drawing, just stick with the pencil. That'll work just fine. But if you want to try a little bit more advanced techniques, you could try using the airbrush just to darken a few values. Now for the hair on this side, I'm using the same thing, which is a Blick colored pencil. And I'm trying the best I can to not focus on individual hairs. I'm looking for sections of hair and trying to draw them together. I don't think I did such a great job on this hair. I was trying, like I said before, to create an impression of hair, not try to add in all the detail. In a future video, we'll certainly go into the details needed to draw or paint realistic hair. But on this one, I don't think it was needed. I think this worked just fine because it forces the viewer to look at the actual portrait itself rather than 
areas in the background like the hair or parts of the hand. So that's going to conclude the first part of this drawing. I think this is a great place to stop for now because the hands can be very difficult to work on. So I'll have that video up in a week or two. At the time of recording this, I have a whopping one subscriber. So if you want to help me or the channel, subscribing, liking the video would help me quite a bit. If you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something. Just remember, drawing can be challenging, but that's also what makes it fun and exciting. Do the best you can, and I promise you'll improve in time. Just don't be hard on yourself. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time in the final part of this drawing.